Sure. Um, so first off, I think one of the first things we are prone to want to do is to be a bit self-deprecating at the very beginning of it. I think a lot of times when we're getting ready to do it, we know and we're flinching ourselves. So we're sort of like, uh, so we verbally do that or we uh, textually do that when we are getting ready to say to somebody, uh, I know this is sort of like pitching you, but, but you know, as we've learned a long time ago, anything before the word, but, uh, you have to throw away anyway. So, uh, I think the first step in learning that we're going to pitch to our friends, one, only do it if you really believe in the product or service. Two, only do it if you believe that you know this friend is somebody that needs this versus this friend has such volume and size and mass and scale that it would be great to get their eye. Right. Uh, and then I think from there, it's do it without the flinch. Just start at the very beginning with, I have this thing I want to pitch to you. And, and just put it like that. Just uh, First sentence of the email, I, I want to sell you something. I want to pitch this thing that I think you're going to dig. Right. And then go in. Because the first sentence gives me a lesson of if, if I'm friends with you, DJ, but I just don't have the time, I can hit the lead even. I can just be like, ah, I'm not even going to reply to him right now. I'm just yeah. forget it. Or, you know, I've decided oh, I'm interested. You know, like the deal with Infusionsoft, you know, and if we're supposed to name names, but I mean, that ended yeah, up being no, that's, deal. But that's, that's what started this whole conversation is that I, I as, as a new business owner at Waldo Social, I, one of my clients, my job is to help get other people to use their service. You know, so I, so that's what so what started this for me was this feeling of like, I ha and I had that flinch I, exactly. I had that flinch of like, oh my god, I'm gonna email Chris Brogan and and we're friends, but we're, we're kind of friends, but we're acquaintances. And like, holy crap, what's what if he just says, what an idiot, DJ? What are you doing? Yeah, right. Go to hell. I'm pushing the spam button. You can never talk to me again. Um, I mean, by the way, that could happen, but I mean with sales or anything, you have to always remember that it's always on that other person's end. Um, you know, the person who said to you that I can't believe you pitched me, uh, was having a grumpy day, was also getting over a man cold. So, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly one of those deals where, you know, just bad timing hits. Um, so I never, I mean, it's hard for me because I take everything to heart. So I've tried really hard to learn how not to in 2012 and beyond. That's the goal is to, if somebody, you know, smashes you, Oh, I'm really sorry. Bad timing, whatever, you know, yeah. Won't happen again, you know, and then you just take them off that list and you decide you're done. Just as long as you're forever treating that list of people that you want to mention like that with compassion. You know, if you're if you're hitting them every day, by the way, they're going to tune you out anyway. They're going to forget you because, you know, if you've got that many clients that you need a daily push on all of your projects, probably we're doing it wrong. Well, what are your, what are your thoughts on, you know, I, I think it obviously has to fit your personality. But for, for me, when I when I've been starting to pitch friends and acquaintances, I always try to do two things. One, I try to use humor, but that, that fits my style. And I know that's not everybody's style, but I'm interested in your comments on, you know, using humor and it could be self-deprecating humor or, or just straight up what you think is funny. And then the second thing is, is obviously making it easy. Like I try to do things where I say, th I'll end the email with simply reply with A, B, or C. A is go to hell. B is holy crap. I can't wait to learn more. And C is could be interested, but not right now. I mean, so I'm just interested. In, does does that? And I know it's different for everybody. Does that approach work for you? Do you think it works with other people? I think it does work. I, and, and by the way, simplifying the response and simplifying the call to action, of course, draws more calls to action. I mean, it, it's easy. I mean, sometimes you, you get one or two kind of emails. You get that one that's like a tease. It's like one sentence. Can I pitch you something? <laughs> right. Right. Yes, and then you're like, okay, please, I'd love more email transactions. Right, and then you like just go more. back and forth, and right, exactly. Right, yeah. And then the other one is this one. Hey, I want to pitch you something. <laughs> and then you know you scroll and you read and you like you fall asleep two paragraphs in and you just don't do it. So the in between is like under two hundred words with a really succinct call to action that says, "Can we just? Can I just get you to a demo?" And that's all. I mean, you just want to get into the next level. And right. I think. As we're learning to be better salespeople in this channel, I think that with friends, it's great to be funny about it. I mean, I maybe wouldn't have even given them three choices. I would have said either go to hell or yes, show me the demo. Because you know, <laughs> right, right, right. If they're saying go to hell, you know they're just being funny about it. Yeah. Okay. No, that, that, that's interesting. And I, I think, you know, especially why this conversation is relevant asking you, I think, is I'm guessing, and tell me if I'm wrong, you probably get pitched quite a bit, right? And not just for oh, friends, yeah. but you get pitched in general, you know. Are, are the ones, what are the ones, I mean, it's, there's a subject, you know, I'm, you know, you know, Chris, I'm an email guy. So for me, like the subject line, I think is so critical, obviously the, mm -hmm. who it's coming from, but, but, but what it says in the subject line, what are the subject lines that you right away go delete? And what are the ones you say, Hmm, maybe I'll just open and see what this is about. Um, so I think this is where copywriting uh, gets in the way 
Um, when it comes to pitching friends, especially when it comes to pitching the masses, fine. Do the cool copywriting tricks. Learn everything you can from Brian Clark at copyblogger.com. But when you're pitching friends, if you say things like, do you have what it takes to succeed in 2012? I'm deleting it. <laughs> right, right. I'm deleting it. I could care less. And the other one is, um, I really need your help. And it's something, you know, dopey like a lead for that. I mean, if I yeah. if you said I really need your help, I hope to God you need me to PayPal you some money because you're in a jail in Latvia. Right. Um, and then know, that's I suspect too because that's the, that's the spam email that goes around, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah. you know, I wanted I want to kind of down the middle. I mean, you might say something like, "What are you? You know, for example, Infusionsoft. What, you know, what are you using for your email uh, automation right now, or your email service provider?" And that's that's a reasonable question amongst marketers. Um, and or you know, are you going to be doing more or less video in 2012? I mean, that's a reasonable question amongst friends like that. But I think. I guess I'm wary of ones that sound like copywriting because you're hoping to be a friend. At the same time, if there's a vagary in the subject line, then I, I might lose it just because. I just right. might not pay attention. So that's interesting. It's really just a balance of the two because you don't want to you don't want to be either extreme, but if it's your friend, you want to be, you know, what catches your you know, I've got I get a ton of emails from friends all the time that just say question. You know, and I'm like, okay, great. And I want I always am tempted to reply with answer. You know, it just, you know, the subject line. So, um, yeah. So, so it sounds like it's doable. You have to use some discretion in, in, in the, what you put in the copy. You've got to make it easy for somebody to respond. The big, big ass call to action, easy to respond. Right. Um, possibly use humor or use something that fits your personality. Sure. And, um, and keep that subject line from either extreme of internet marketer guy to, too abstract and, and, right. Yeah, the other thing that rushed into my head, DJ, was the idea of ease of use. If you're, if you're um, like that quick question kind of thing, you never know if it's really going to be quick. I mean, I've had to be like, quick question, how do I get into video blogging? <laughs> oh, quick answer. Push it is a quick, it's a quick question, though. <laughs> it's not yeah, a quick that's answer. true. Right. They, they've, they've accurately laid it out. Um, I think that make it, use, make it simple. I mean, I've had a lot of people do this one to me. Chris, I really, you know, I've read your blog for 400 years. I think you're the most amazing guy in the world. I've named all my kids Chris and my dogs Chris. Um, please, would you just look at my blog with yeah, no URL? Right. Yeah, sure. Great. Fine. I'll just guess your URL. It's uh, kind of a dumb shit dot com. Well, so. even, but see, I think it's even interesting. Even will you look at my URL? Well, or look at my website? Okay. What do you want me to do when I get there? Want me to tell you if it sucks? <laughs> you want me to tell you? You want me to give you my my ten second impression of what it's all about? Do you want me to? I mean, what what do you want me to do? That's a that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, ease of use is a really important one that I, I left off that list, which is you know if the email uh, subject line said this will take three minutes, or this will take seven minutes, or this is this will take longer. Let me know when we can schedule time. Right. I, uh, wow, how magical is that? Because then I know if I'm sitting there whacking out emails, bing, 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 in my email game, I'm going to answer the three mail one because that's going to, I mean, three minutes because it's going to help me win email game. So you're still doing the email game, huh? You're still I using love that? it. Really? I can't believe how totally hooked I am into it. I actually, I have a negative uh, behavior. I store emails now so that I can play the game. <laughs> Like, I, you know, I know I could bang it out in a minute, but I want to get a better score. And, and, and are you still using, you, you got me onto Nudge Mail about a year ago, and I've been using that. I use that religious. I saw Anne uses it too. In fact, she yes. even BCCs tomorrow. Well, she didn't, she actually CC'd it. That's the only reason I knew about it. But she said tomorrow, and she sent me a reminder email actually today about our call saying, and I, you know, she must have used Nudge Mail too. So you're, are you using that as religiously as? I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. It's it, it's it's for people who haven't used it. Go to nudgemail.com. It is ridiculously simple. You don't even ever have to go to that site. You could send email to Nudgemail, and it knows what to do with it. Now, now let me ask you. Now this is a little bit off topic, but do you ever find yourself with Nudgemail doing a little bit of the same thing that you used to do with Outlook when a, an a calendar invite popped up, a calendar reminder, and you just hit snooze, snooze, snooze? Because I find yes, <laughs> like you hit snooze, you know, for three weeks, and you're like, okay, I'm probably not going to get to this. Right. Right. I mean, that becomes a behavioral thing. You have to decide, okay, in 2012, I am not going to let something last more than 10 days. You right. know, it'll just never, there'll never be an email date in my box or a uh, open question for more than 10 days. And that, that becomes a behavior thing. I don't think software will let us fix that one. Well, Chris Penn's always done, he, he, I think at the first of every month for at least as long as I've known him, he sends a tweet out or sends some kind of, some kind of reminder that says, if you have email in your inbox more than 30 days old, go ahead and archive it right now because you're never going to see it. He's not wrong. Yeah, He's not wrong at all. Yeah. 
I, I advocate deleting just because I, I like having a really low percentage of uh, storage base use, but hey. Yeah, I actually re I just bought more storage last year, I'm embarrassed to admit. For five bucks uh, you a know, year, it's not, it's not terrible, but... <laughs> we handle it different ways. I think that's fair either way. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Chris. I know we got in a couple other topics, but um, and I'm really fascinated about how, well, just in general, how, how people respond to pitches, especially through email, and, um, and I think you've given some really good insight and some good thoughts into this, so... Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, DJ. I had a blast. Thank you for asking.